How old are card games? Card games are believed to have originated in China in about a D800. By the late 1200s cards had made their way to Italy. Perhaps carried aboard merchant ships, and from there spread to other parts of Europe. The present day variety of four suits hearts, diamonds, clubs, and spades was adopted in France during the 1500s. What is the difference between the Roman Empire and the Holy Roman Empire? Roughly four and a half centuries separated the two empires. Both of which were comprised of vast regions of Western and Central Europe. The Roman Empire was established in 27 BC, when Augustus, also known as Octavian, 63b.ca.d14. The grandnephew, adopted son, and chosen heir of Julius Caesar, 100-44 BC. Became emperor. His reign lasted until AD 476, when Rome fell to Germanic tribes. The Holy Roman Empire, HRE, began in the mid 900s AD, when Otto I, 912-973, of Germany gained control of most of northern and central Italy. Pope John the Twelfth. C 937 to 964, crowned Otto Emperor in 962. In the 1200s, the area of power officially became known as the Holy Roman Empire. The HRE was dismantled July 12, 1806, in the Confederation of the Rhine which brought most of the German states under French domination the result of the Napoleonic Wars. But even after Napoleon Bonaparte, 1769-1821, was permanently ousted as head of France in 1815, there were no attempts to reinstate the Holy Roman Empire. What is the doctrine of idols? This was a phrase used by English philosopher Sir Francis Bacon. 1561 to 1626, in his written attack on the widespread acceptance of the thinking of ancient philosophers such as Aristotle, 384 to 322 b. c. and Plato, c. 428 to 347 b.c., and the founder of modern astronomy, Copernicus, 1473 to 1543. In his 1620 work, Novum Organum, Bacon vehemently argues that human progress is held back by adherence to certain concepts, which it does not question. By hanging on to these concepts, or idols, humankind may proceed in error in its thinking. The double edge is that in holding to notions accepted as true, we run the danger of dismissing any new notion, a tendency Bacon characterized as arrogance. A quality that goes hand in hand with arrogance is skepticism. In adhering to that which we know, we are likely to dismiss any new ideas. To combat these obstacles, Bacon advocated a method of persistent inquiry. 
he believed that humans can understand nature only by carefully observing it with the help of instruments. He went on to describe scientific experimentation as an organized endeavor. That should involve many scientists and which requires the support of leaders. Thus, Bacon is credited with no less than formulating modern scientific thought. Which Van Eyck Hubert or Jan painted the Ghent altarpiece? The large, multi-paneled altarpiece is as controversial as it is admired. The controversy stems from an 1832 discovery, under a coat of paint on one of its outside panels. Of a Latin poem that indicated that Hubert, 1395-1441, had begun the work and Jan. C. 1370-1426, had completed it. So it was believed that the Ghent altarpiece, 1432, was a collaboration between the Flemish brothers. But the question of attribution continued to puzzle art historians for a century and a half as attempts to assign different parts of the polyptych. Multi-paneled work, to either of the brothers failed to gain acceptance. One art historian suggested that Hubert may not have been a painter at all, but rather a sculptor. This theory posited that Hubert's contribution was only in crafting the frames from which the paintings had been removed in 1566 and which were subsequently lost. However, Scholars seem to have now reached the consensus that Hubert was largely responsible for the design of the altarpiece and for much of its execution. While Jan was the designer and painter of most of the figures. This elaborate altarpiece, which is composed of 20 folding panels, was typical of Northern European art during the Middle Ages, 500-1350 However, both Van Eyck's contributed to the flowering of Renaissance art in Northern Europe as well. In Jan's works, which are finely detailed and ornamental. He was originally a miniaturist and illuminator, the progression from medieval to Renaissance art can be seen. In particular, his painting Man in a Red Turban, 1433, which may be a self-portrait, marks an important step in the humanization of art. Prior to this, the artist's subjects had been religious in nature. Here the painting is simply a record of a living individual. This kind of portraiture began to multiply as artists and patrons alike became increasingly interested in the reality revealed by them. Through such portraits, man began to confront himself rather than the otherworldly anonymity of the Middle Ages. Renaissance art in Italy as well as in Northern Europe marks the climax of the slow but mighty process. That brings man's eyes down from the supernatural to the natural world, Gardner's art through the ages. What happened to the butcher of Bosnia? During the Bosnian War, Radovan Karadzic, 1945, the former president of the Serb Republic and commander of its armed forces, 
earned himself the ignominious nickname the Butcher of Bosnia for directing the massacres and mass victimization of enemies, many of them Muslims. Following the war, the United Nations International Court Tribunal for the Former Yugoslavia, ICTY. In The Hague issued two indictments of Karadzic, charging him with genocide, war crimes, and crimes against humanity. Karadzic disappeared in 1996 and was still at large in spring 2005. There were Warrants for his arrest in early December 1998, North Atlantic Treaty Organization NATO, forces arrested Karadzic henchman General Major Radislav Kristic, 1948 The high-ranking Serbian official was believed to have taken part in the July 1995 massacre of as many as eight. 000 Muslims in the eastern Bosnian town of Srebrenica. On August 2, 2001, Kristic was found guilty of genocide, persecutions for murders, cruel and inhumane treatment, terrorizing the civilian population, forcible transfer and destruction of personal property of Bosnian Muslim civilians and murder as a violation of the laws and customs of war, he was sentenced to 46 years in prison. After appeals, in April 2004, Christic's sentence was reduced to 35 years based on the court's belief that he had aided and abetted acts of genocide but had not instigated them. He was transferred to Great Britain to serve out his sentence. Another high-ranking Serbian military leader who faced charges of genocide before the ICTY was General Ratko Mladic, 1942. As the former commander of the Bosnian Serb forces in Bosnia and Herzegovina, Mladic was considered responsible for the serious breaches of international humanitarian law committed by the Bosnian Serb forces between May 1992 and July 1995, including the massacre at Srebrenica. His indictment also included charges of war crimes and crimes against humanity. He was still wanted in spring 2005. How old is Buddhism? One of the great Asian religions, Buddhism dates back to ancient times. It was founded in India in the 6th and 5th centuries B.C. by Siddhartha Gautama. C 563 C 483 BC, who became known as Buddha, or Enlightened One. Born in what is today Nepal, Siddhartha's father is described in stories as a king or a warrior prince, and the family lived in luxury. When he was 29 years old, Siddhartha had a series of four visions that prompted him to leave his wife, young son, and the palace and venture out in search of spiritual enlightenment and truth. He wandered for six years, traveling to the ancient kingdom of Magadha, in present-day India. During this time he led a life of extreme austerity and even self-torture. He finally decided that his ascetic life would not lead him to truth. And he abandoned his practice of self-denial. One day, when he was 35 years old, Siddhartha went to meditate under a banyan, 
shade, tree, also called a Bodhi tree. There he claimed to achieve enlightenment. Thereafter, Buddha traveled through the Ganges River Valley. Teaching meditation and adherence to moral conduct as the way to enlightenment. He established a community of monks to continue his work. Buddhism is the world's fourth largest religion, after Christianity, Islam, and Hinduism. Most of the estimated 360 million Buddhists in the world today live in Asia. Sri Lanka, Southeast Asia, and Japan, predominantly. How old is the British Parliament? The Legislative Assembly of Great Britain has roots dating back to the Middle Ages. 500-1350, when a great council, known as the Curia Regis, advised the king. This body was made up of nobility and clergy. The body evolved over time and progressively gained more power to govern. Today Parliament consists of the House of Commons, a democratically elected body. Roughly equivalent to the U.S. House of Representatives, the House of Lords. Which consists of noblemen, dukes, marquesses, earls, viscounts, and barons. As well as high-ranking Anglican clergy, bishops and abbots, and the monarch, king or queen. Since 1911 the power of the House of Lords has been negligible. With the House of Commons charged with electing the Prime Minister, who must be a member of Commons. The Prime Minister not the monarch is the executive head of government. What is the legacy of ancient Rome? Since the Romans borrowed and adapted the ideas of the Greeks, with whom they had come into contact about 300 B.C. and later conquered in 146 B.C., the culture of ancient Rome is sometimes called Greco-Roman. Over the course of centuries, Romans spread their ideas throughout their vast empire. They also developed a legal code, which outlined basic principles while remaining flexible enough that lawyers and judges could interpret the laws, taking into consideration local customs and practices. The code later became the model for legal systems in Europe and in Latin America. Further, Roman armies built a network of roads, aqueducts, and tunnels. Putting in place an infrastructure that outlasted the empire itself. Latin, the Roman language, remained the language of educated Europeans for more than 1,000 years. While the Latin based, or Romance, languages of Italian, French, and Spanish took over everyday communication. The economic system put in place during the height of the Roman Empire, with a centrally controlled money supply. Also had lasting effect. Though the empire crumbled by AD 476, its cultural, social, and economic establishments continued to have validity well into the Middle Ages, 500-1350.
Why do music historians talk about before Bach and after Bach? Some scholars use these terms to classify music history since the life work of Johann Sebastian Bach. 1685-1750, was so substantial, consisting of some 1,100 works. And has had lasting and profound influence on music composition. While he was not famous during his lifetime and had disagreements with employers throughout his career. J.S. Bach's works and innovations in many ways defined music as people now know it. The tempered scale is among his inventions, and he initiated a keyboard technique that is considered standard today. Chronologically J.S. Bach marks the end of the prolific and variegated Baroque era, which began about 1600 and ended the year of his death, 1750. A devout Christian J.S. Bach believed that all music was to the glory of God and the recreation of the human spirit. As a spiritual person and true believer in eternal life, he left behind an impressive body of church music. Including 300 cantatas, or musical sermons, as well as passions and oratorios. As a devoted family man who believed all his children were born musicians. And therefore, the backs could stage drawing room music at any time. J.S. Bach also wrote chamber music, including instrumental concertos, suites, and overtures. Among his most well known and beloved works are the St. Matthew Passion. Yezu, Joy of Man's Desiring, Sheep May Safely Graze, and his Christmas Oratorio. When was the first human organ transplant? The first human organ transplant occurred on June 17, 1950, at The Little Company of Mary Hospital in Evergreen Park, Illinois The suburban Chicago Hospital, better known as the Baby Hospital for the high number of births there each year was an unlikely place for this landmark in medical history and the doctors who took part in the transplant tried to keep the highly experimental procedure quiet. The subject was a 44-year-old woman who suffered from polycystic kidney disease. She received a donor organ, a kidney, from a cadaver. Making the procedure even more controversial for the Catholic hospital. At the time, the church was opposed to the idea that tissue could be taken from a dead person and put into a living person, and that the tissue would then come to life again. But the three doctors who performed the procedure had the confidence and trust of the sisters running the hospital. Doctors James W. West, Richard H. Lawler, and Raymond P. Murphy were surgeons on the faculty at Loyola Strict School of Medicine and the Cook County Hospital but also practiced at Little Company of Mary. The operation was the last resort for the patient, who had seen her mother, sister, and uncle die from the same disease. Word leaked about the operation, and several days after the procedure, when the patient was doing well, the hospital and doctors went public with their breakthrough, making headlines around the world. 
the transplanted kidney functioned in the patient for about six weeks enough time for her other kidney to begin working again. She lived another five years before finally succumbing to the disease. On December 23, 1954, Harvard University physicians led by surgeon Joseph E. Murray, 1919, performed the world's first successful transplant from a living donor. The patient's identical twin brother. The operation took place at Peter Bent Brigham Hospital, now Brigham and Women's Hospital. Since the patient and the donor had the same genetic makeup, organ rejection was not an issue. The procedure saved the patient's life, and the well-publicized breakthrough immediately opened up the possibility for similar transplants, between identical twins, as well as for the transplantation of other organs. Dr. Murray and other Harvard researchers continued working on the problem of rejection. Eventually developing new drugs that reduce the possibility that a recipient would reject an organ from a non-relative. In 1990 Murray was awarded the Nobel Prize for his pioneering work. He shared the prize with his friend and colleague E. Donald Thomas, 1920, an innovator in bone marrow transplant. Today tens of thousands of organs are transplanted each year in the United States. In October 2004 doctors performed the first organ transplant arranged and brokered over the Internet. Who was Typhoid Mary? Typhoid Mary was the name given to Mary Mallon, c. 1870 to 1938, the first known carrier of typhoid fever in the United States. Though Mallon had recovered from the disease, as a cook in New York City area restaurants she continued to spread typhoid fever germs to others, infecting more than 50 people between 1900 and 1915. The New York State Sanitation Department connected her to at least six typhoid fever outbreaks there. Officials finally and permanently institutionalized her in 1914 to prevent further spread of the acute infectious disease. Who said Veni, Vidi, Vici, and what does it mean? The famous words were written by Roman statesman and General Julius Caesar, 100-44 b. c. as he announced the victory of his army in Asia Minor in early August 47 BC. The extraordinarily concise message, which Caesar dispatched to Rome, means simply I came, I saw, I conquered. The general had defeated Pharnaces II, 63-47 BC. In a fight for control of Pontus, an ancient kingdom in northeast Asia Minor. The brief but decisive battle took place near Zela, in present-day Turkey. What was the reign of terror?
it refers to the short but bloody period in French history that began in 1793 and ended July. 1794 During this time revolutionary leader Maximilien Robespierre, 1758-1794, led a tribunal that arrested, tried, and put to death more than 17,000 people most of them by guillotine. In the reforms that followed the 1789 oath of the tennis court and the capture of the Bastille, France was transformed into a constitutional state, and French subjects became French citizens. An elected legislature, the Constituent Assembly, was given control of the government. Robespierre was elected first deputy from Paris and was the leader of the Radical Popular Party. In this new era, those who had been associated with the old regime or those who opposed the French Revolution became the subjects of persecution. In January 1793 King Louis XVI, 1754-1793, and his wife, Marie Antoinette, 1755-1793, were executed, beginning the reign of terror that saw thousands more. Mostly those who had made up the powerful first and second estates, suffer a similar fate at the hands of the revolutionaries. To escape certain death, many fled the country, this included top-ranking military officials. Which made room for the rapid advancement of young military officers such as Napoleon Bonaparte, 1769-1821. The reign of terror ended on July 28, 1794, when Robespierre himself was put to death. As he gained power and influence, the revolutionary leader also had become increasingly paranoid. Even putting two of his friends to death in 1794, he was overthrown. On July 27 by the revolution of 9th Thermidor and the next day died by guillotine. Who are the Leakies? The prominent British family has included four scientists who have made significant anthropological findings in East Africa. Family Patriarch Louis S. B. Leakey, 1903-1972, was born near Nairobi, Kenya. The oldest child of British missionaries. There he grew up, learning the tribal language of the Kikuyu people before he learned English and wandering the countryside where he discovered primitive stone arrowheads and tools. While attending Cambridge University, Leakey determined that he would pursue a career in archaeology. And he went on to earn his doctorate degree. Louis Leakey married archaeologist and artist Mary Douglas, 1913-1996, in 1936 returning to Leakey's boyhood home to conduct their work. The husband and wife team made their first discovery of note in 1948, near Lake Victoria, Kenya, they found more than 30 fragments of the skull of an ape-like creature. Scientists concluded that the animal was a common ancestor of humankind and apes and had lived between 25 and 40 million years ago. The Leakeys made their most well-known discoveries in neighboring Tanzania during the late 1950s and into the 1960s. Proving that human evolution was centered in Africa. 
At the Old Ove Gorge, a 35-mile long ravine, the archaeologists discovered layers of Earth's history. Including almost 100 forms of extinct animal life. They also unearthed the fossils of a near man, Zinjanthropus, who possessed a brain about half the size of the modern human and who walked upright at a height of about 5 feet, roughly 1.75 million years ago. Because he lived on a diet of nuts and meat, the discovery came to be called Nutcracker Man. Subsequent findings at the gorge included that of Homo habilis, called Abel Man. Since it is believed that he made use of the stone tools found nearby. Louis Leakey later decided the two human-like creatures, Abel Man and Nutcracker Man, had actually lived in the same place at the same time meaning that the evolution of humankind was not along the linear path that had been thought. While Leakey's controversial conclusion challenged the scientific community, so would the finds of their scientist son Richard, 1944- in the decades that followed his parents' discoveries at Old Ove Gorge. Richard pursued his own projects at Lake Turkana in north-central Kenya. There Richard discovered more than 200 early man fossils. Like his father, Richard Leakey is part of a husband and wife team of scientists. In 1971 he married British-born Meve Epps, 1942. A zoologist and paleontologist who had been hired by Louis Leakey in 1965 to work on his African digs. Together Richard and Meve Leakey, along with American anthropologist Alan Walker, have discovered and identified some of the oldest known human-like fossils. In 1994 and 1995, near Lake Turkana, the team found prehistoric fossils. Identified as Australopithecus anamnesis, human-like creatures that lived about 4 million years ago. What is the Homeric question? During the 18th and 19th centuries, scholars became involved in a debate, referred to as the Homeric question, about whether the Iliad and the Odyssey were written by the same author, or even if any one author can be credited with the entire composition of either poem, and what kind of an author Homer was. The dispute continues today. Scholars believe the Iliad was probably written much earlier than the Odyssey. Though there is not enough evidence to prove that the Greek poet Homer, c. 850- BC, did not write both epics. Further, it was suggested that Homer was a bard, oral poet, who was unable to read or write and who sang the great stories of the Iliad and Odyssey to the accompaniment of a lyre. According to this theory, the tales would have been dictated by Homer to a scribe late in the poet's life. However, some have left open the possibility that the human histories told in the Iliad and the Odyssey were in fact the composite result of the storytelling of numerous bards. Several other poems, including the Margits and the Batrachomyomachia, have also been attributed to Homer, but they were most likely written by his successors. Why was John Paul II called the People's Pope?
because during his 27-year tenure, he dramatically changed the public perception of the Pope. Polish Cardinal Karol Wojtyla, 1920-2005, was named Pope John Paul II on October 16, 1978. Becoming the first non-Italian head of the Roman Catholic Church in 455 years. From the first moments of his service, it was clear that this was a different kind of Pope. Upon his election, he greeted the cardinals of the conclave his brothers standing rather than seated, which was the tradition. A few weeks after his election, he leaned out the windows of the Vatican Palace to sing carols with 50,000 children gathered in St. Peter's Square to celebrate Christmas. Instead of limiting his concerns to the administration of the church, he traveled far and wide to carry the message of Christianity to the people. Crowds, often numbering in the hundreds of thousands to millions, gathered to see him around the globe. In 1979 he made his first trip to the United States. After which Time magazine ran a cover story with the headline, John Paul, Superstar. Pope John Paul fought for freedom of religion everywhere, even challenging his communist homeland. His call for solidarity contributed to the downfall of communism in Poland and across the Eastern Bloc. He published regularly memoirs as well as books of prayers, lessons, meditations, and poetry. Despite his active ministry on the world stage, he remained a traditionalist. Never wavering from the ages old teachings of the Catholic Church. When he died on April 2, 2005, he was hailed both as a holy man and a man of peace by Christians and non Christians alike. How old is Standard Time? Standard Time was introduced in 1884, it was the outcome of an international conference held in Washington, D. C. to consider a worldwide system of time. By international agreement, Earth was divided into 24 different standard time zones. Within each time zone, all clocks are to be set to the same time. The device of standardized time zones was necessitated by the expansion of industry, businesses. Particularly those in the transportation industry, could not coordinate schedules when each community used its own solar time. The local time as determined by the position of the sun. Railroad schedules had been extremely complicated before the establishment of standard time zones, which the railroads readily adopted. Each time zone spans 15 degrees of longitude, beginning at zero longitude, called the prime meridian, which passes through the observatory at Greenwich, a borough of London, England. Time kept at the observatory is called Greenwich Mean Time, GMT. Time zones are described by their distance east or west of Greenwich. The model also dictates that each time zone is one hour apart from the next. However, the borders of the time zones have been adjusted throughout the world to accommodate national state and provincial boundaries. 
the contiguous United States has four time zones, Eastern, Central, Mountain, and Pacific. Waters off the eastern seaboard are in the Atlantic time zone, Alaska. Hawaii, Samoa, Wake Island, and Guam each have their own time zones. Congress gave the Interstate Commerce Commission, ICC, authority to establish limits for U.S. time. Zones in 1918 this authority was transferred to the Department of Transportation, DOT, in 1967. How are amendments made to the U.S. Constitution? There are two paths that proposed amendments can take to become law. The first path is this, an amendment is proposed in Congress, two-thirds of both houses must then approve it. If they do not, then the proposal ends here, if approved in both houses of the U.S. Congress. The proposed amendment is sent to the legislatures, or conventions. Of each state of the Union, three-fourths of all the state legislatures must then approve it. By whatever rules each state legislature uses, once three-fourths of the states approve it, the amendment is made. If three-fourths of the states do not approve it, the amendment fails to become law. The second path is this. The legislatures of two-thirds of the states ask for an amendment to be made to the U.S. Constitution. Congress then calls a convention to propose it. Then the proposed amendment becomes a law when it is ratified by the legislatures in three-fourths of the states. While this path has never been taken, it's an important provision nonetheless since it allows for a popular state-based proposal to be considered. How did CNN change television news? When Ted Turner's cable news network, CNN went on the air June 1, 1980, it was amid a fair amount of skepticism. Some thought the maverick businessman was ill-advised to air news around the clock to cable television subscribers. History would soon prove Turner's detractors wrong. 24 hours of airtime brought CNN something other news entities didn't have the time to do more stories and more in-depth news stories. The American public embraced the concept and soon began to rely on CNN not only to provide more information than other TV news sources, but for breaking news and up-to-the-minute updates on top stories. In 1991, during the CNN coverage of the Persian Gulf War, which CNN had more or less aired live. Newspapers reported a phenomenon Americans couldn't turn the news station off. Gone were the days of planning dinner around the evening network news or waiting until 11 p.m. To learn the latest, CNN and its sister station, Headline News Network were news at the ready. At a time when the term global marketplace was quickly becoming part of the vocabulary of every working American. CNN was uniquely able to capitalize on the growing sensibility of a world community. In 1985 CNN International was launched as a 24-hour global news service. 
at first reaching only to England, by 1989 the signal was beamed via satellite to Africa, Asia, and the Middle East. CNN has continued to evolve its programming to cover news. In every area of endeavor with programs such as Business Day, Larry King Live, World Today, and Science and Technology Week, proving that the concept has staying power. The network, which began turning a profit after five years, has picked up multiple journalism awards, including the coveted Peabody Award. One of the early harbingers of CNN's success came in April 1982 when CNN won. The right to be on equal footing with the major network news organizations in the White House press pool. When was the first university established in the West? The first modern Western university was established in the Middle Ages 1158 to be exact in Bologna, Italy. It was in that year that Frederick I, c. 1123 to 1190, Holy Roman Emperor, asserted his authority in Lombardy. He granted the first university charter for the University of Bologna. Authorizing its students to organize. The universities that were set up in Europe during the Middle Ages. 500-1350 were not any CSRLE places or groups of buildings, they were more often groups of scholars and students. The University of Paris, which today includes the renowned Sorbonne. The university's Liberal Arts and Sciences Division, soon became the largest and most famous university in Europe. The Sorbonne itself was founded in 1250 as a school of theology. It was reorganized in the 1600s by 1500 universities had been founded throughout the continent. Of these, the ones that survive today include the universities of Cambridge and Oxford in England. Those at Montpellier, Paris, and Toulouse, France, Heidelberg, Germany. Bologna, Florence, Naples, Padua, Rome, and Siena, Italy, and Salamanca, Spain. The methods and techniques developed in these early institutions set standards of academic inquiry that remain part of higher education in the world today. What is mercantilism? An economic system that developed as feudalism was dissolving, at the end of the Middle Ages 500-1350. Mercantilism advocates strict government control of the national economy. Its adherents believe a healthy economy can only be achieved through state regulation. The goals were to accumulate bullion, gold or silver bars. Establish a favorable balance of trade with other countries, develop the nation's agricultural concerns, as well as its manufacturing concerns, and establish foreign trading policies. When was public broadcasting started? In the United States it was started in 1967, 
when the Public Broadcasting Act was signed into law by President Lyndon Johnson. 1908-1973, on November 7. Creating a corporation for public broadcasting to broaden the scope of non-commercial radio and TV beyond its educational role. Within three years, and as a result of federal grants, plus funds from foundations, business, and private contributions, public broadcasting service. PBS, rivaled the big three networks, NBC, CBS, and ABC, for viewers. In England the British Broadcasting Corporation, BBC, took control of the development of television in 1932, launching BBC TV. The BBC had been founded as a radio broadcaster in 1922 under the leadership of English engineer John Charles Reith, 1889-1971. Reith remained at the helm of the BBC for 16 years after its founding and under his guidance. It became one of Britain's most revered institutions, supported by the public with licence fees. What was Black Friday? The term refers to one of two Fridays in the second half of the 1800s when severe market drops precipitated financial crises in the United States. The first Black Friday was September 24, 1869, financiers Jay Gould, 1836-1892, and James Fisk, 1834-1872, had conspired to raise the market price of gold by buying it in huge quantities. Leaving less supply on the open market, which would, theoretically, increase demand and therefore price. Having caused the price to increase, the businessmen planned to sell their gold supplies at a profit. While they did make out handsomely, clearing some $11 million, a panic resulted when the price of gold rose sharply. Businesses that needed gold to meet their obligations were forced to pay exorbitant prices for it. The government responded to the crisis by selling off $4 million of its gold reserves, causing gold prices to tumble. Speculators were hit hard, but Gould and Fisk came out unscathed. Selling off their gold supplies before the price plummeted. Four years later, Another Friday turned dark when the investment banking firm of J. Cook and Company failed after it had invested too heavily in railroad securities, which had since declined. When news of the company's collapse was released on September 19, 1873, it affected the entire stock market, and prices fell sharply. The so-called Panic of 1873 signaled the beginning of a depression that persisted through most of the 1870s. What is Contract Bridge? It's the game most people play when they play bridge. A card game for four players in two partnerships who bid to name the trump suit. The other kind of bridge is called auction bridge, 
which was invented in 1904 as a variation on the card game Whist. Whist had been played since the early 16th century, if not longer. Auction bridge differs from contract bridge in that tricks made in excess of the contract are scored toward game, in contract bridge they are not. It's believed that contract bridge originated in 1926 when railroad heir and yachtsman Harold S. Vanderbilt, 1884-1970, invented the variation while on a Caribbean cruise. The game did not catch on until 1930, when Romanian-American contract. Bridge expert Eli Culbertson defeated Lt. Colonial W.T. M. Butler in a challenge match at London's Almax Club, the match was highly publicized. What was the Counter-Reformation? Also called the Catholic Reformation, it was the Roman Catholic Church's response to the Protestant Reformation of the 16th century. Some parishioners and members of the Roman Catholic clergy had already been calling for reforms within the Church for more than two centuries when in 1517 German monk and theology professor Martin Luther 1483 to 1546, nailed his 95 theses to the door of the castle church at Wittenberg, Saxony, Germany. His theses attacked the doctrines and authority of the church, sparking the Reformation. The movement's leaders, called Protestants because they protested against the Catholic Church changed the religious landscape of Europe by creating new Christian churches. But a movement to make changes inside the Catholic Church also began. The turning point came in 1534 when Paul III, 1468-1549, became Pope. Realizing that the Church must respond to what it viewed as a religious crisis. Pope Paul convened the Council of Trent, in Italy, which was charged with reviewing all aspects of religious life. The ecumenical group met from 1545 to 1547, 1551 to 1552, and 1562 to 1563. And out of those deliberations emerged the modern Catholic Church. The Counter-Reformation was aided by a group of priests and brothers known as the Jesuits. Members of the Society of Jesus, a religious order of the Roman Catholic Church. The Jesuits were instrumental in spreading the word of the reforms and in promoting a new spirit within the Catholic Church. How could so many people, Hutus, have participated in the mass cleansing? Experts point to Rwanda's deeply divided history, the rivalry between Hutus and Tutsis dates back hundreds of years since the Tutsis first arrived in the Central African region in the 14th century. What is Shinto? Shinto is the dominant religion of Japan. 
its traditions call for the reverence of ancestors, prayer, and the observance of rituals. It is polytheistic, believing in many gods, Kami, who are thought to be the forces behind nature as well as behind human conditions such as sickness, healing, and creativity. Followers of the Shinto religion believe these spirits are housed in shrines. Private shrines are erected in homes while public shrines can be highly elaborate. Including multiple buildings as well as gardens. The latter are the goals of many religious pilgrimages. Pilgrims pray and make offerings, of money and flowers, to the spirits. Originating in Japan in ancient times, Shinto has an interesting modern history. In 1882 religious organizations were divided into two groups state shrines and sectarian shrines. State Shinto was controlled by the government, which went so far as to proclaim divine origins for the Japanese emperor. After World War II, 1939-45, State Shinto crumbled and Emperor Hirohito. 1901-1989, was compelled to renounce his divinity. Sectarian Shinto religion still thrives in Japan today, where it has more than 3 million followers. What was the lasting effect of the Clarence Earl Gideon trials? A 51-year-old drifter charged with burglary in Panama City, Florida, Clarence Earl Gideon had two trials. In 1961 and 1963, but it's what happened between the two trials that is important to every American today. What might have been pretty standard fare in the day-to-day -day business of the American justice system? Gideon was charged with robbing a cigarette machine and a jukebox. The Gideon case instead made history when the defendant successfully argued that his constitutional rights had been denied when he was refused an attorney. Though he had a limited education, after a guilty verdict was handed down in his 1961 trial, Gideon knew enough about his rights to petition the Supreme Court, saying that his right to a fair trial, guaranteed by the Sixth Amendment, had been violated. Since he was not able to hire a lawyer to defend himself, the trial had not been fair. The petition, one of thousands the Supreme Court receives each year, somehow rose to the top. The High Court heard Gideon's case and agreed with his conclusion, calling it an obvious truth. And clearly stating that any person hailed into court who is too poor to hire a lawyer, cannot be assured a fair trial unless counsel in provided for him. For Gideon, the opinion served to throw out the first trial, for the rest of America. It was assurance that regardless of the crime, a defendant would be guaranteed legal counsel. With the benefit of that counsel, Gideon's case was retried in 1963 he was acquitted on all charges. How old is the Great Wall of China? The immense structure, built as a barricade of protection against invasion was begun during the 3rd century B. 
C by Emperor Shi Huang Ti, Chen, C 259-210 BC, of the Chin dynasty. And was expanded over the course of succeeding centuries. The wall stretches 1,500 miles, ranges in height between 20 to 50 feet. And is between 15 and 25 feet thick. In the 13th century, the wall was penetrated when Mongols conquered China. Expanding their empire across all of Asia. Who was Dorothea Dix? Dorothea Lindy Dix, 1802-1887 Was a philanthropist and among the first American women to become active in social reform. Having been headmistress of her own school for girls in Boston from 1821 to 1836, in 1841 Dix toured Massachusetts State Correctional Institutions, where she was shocked to see deplorable treatment of the mentally ill. Thereafter Dix became an impassioned advocate for the mentally ill, leading a drive to build hospitals for the specialized care of those afflicted with mental illnesses. Dix appealed to the consciences of legislators and philanthropists. She was successful in establishing mental hospitals throughout the United States, Canada, and Europe, many of which still bear her name. Dix's campaign for humane treatment of the mentally ill transformed American attitudes and institutions in the two decades that led up to the Civil War, 1861-65. During the war she acted as superintendent of the U.S. Army nurses. She also worked to improve prison conditions during her lifetime. What happened on Iwo Jima? During the month of February 1945 Allied forces and the Japanese fought for control of Iwo Jima. A small island in the northwest Pacific Ocean, 759 miles south of Tokyo. Japan was using Iwo Jima as a base from which to launch air attacks on U.S. bombers in the Pacific. Capturing the island from the Japanese became a key objective for the United States. On February 19, 1945, the 4th and 5th U.S. Marine Divisions invaded the island. Fighting over the next several days claimed more than 6,000 U.S. troops. On the morning of February 23, after a rigorous climb to the top of Mount Suribachi, Iwo Jima's 550-foot inactive volcano, U.S. Marines planted an American flag. Though small, it was visible from around the island. Later that day, a larger flag was raised atop Mount Suribachi by five Marines and a Navy hospital corpsman. The moment was captured by American news photographer Joe Rosenthal. His famous photo became the inspiration for the U.S. Marine Corps Memorial. Dedicated November 10, 1954, in Arlington, Virginia. What did immigrants experience at Ellis Island?
the Ellis Island Immigration Depot was a processing center. For third-class ship passengers arriving in New York Harbor. Most first- and second-class passengers were processed by immigration officials on board their ships. The new arrivals were ferried from their transatlantic vessels to Ellis Island. Where they disembarked and were guided in groups into registration areas in the Great Hall, a room 200 feet long and 100 feet wide. There they were questioned by government officials who determined their eligibility to land. Upon completing the registration process, newcomers were ushered into rooms where they were examined by doctors. The processing was extremely businesslike to the point of being dehumanizing. Processing typically took between three and five hours. An estimated 98% of those arriving at Ellis Island were allowed into the country. The remaining 2% were turned back for medical reasons. As U.S. health officials tried to keep out infectious diseases, or for reasons of insanity or criminal record. Other Facilities at the Ellis Island Immigration Station included showers that could accommodate as many as 8,000 bathers a day. Restaurants, railroad ticket offices, a laundry, and a hospital. At its peak, the Ellis Island Station processed some 5,000 immigrants and non-immigrating aliens, visitors, daily. What was the Brum Air coup d'état? It was the overthrow on November 9, 1799, of the French Revolutionary Government. The coup put Napoleon Bonaparte, 1769-1821. In power as one of three councils intended to head the government. While Napoleon was in Egypt and Syria waging what were for the most part successful military. Campaigns on behalf of the French government, there was growing discontent back home with the directory. The group of five men who had governed France since 1795. His army stranded in the Middle East. Napoleon received word that France might soon be under attack by the Second Coalition. The second in a series of six alliances that formed in Europe in order to stave off French domination. Leaving another man in command of his troops, Napoleon hurried home where he was welcomed as a hero. Aided by his brother, Lucien Bonaparte, 1775-1840, and the French revolutionary leader Emmanuel Joseph C. I's. 1748-1836, Napoleon carried out a coup d'état, overthrowing the directory. A consulate was formed, with the young Napoleon becoming first consul. The other councils had little influence, acting primarily as advisors to the ambitious Napoleon. The coup marked the end of the French Revolution, after the chaos and violence of the previous decade. The French people looked to Napoleon as a strong leader who could bring order to the country. They did not know that the 30-year-old possessed a seemingly insatiable hunger for power which would soon transform the government into a dictatorship. After a brief peace, Napoleon declared himself Emperor of France on December 2, 1804. By which time he had already begun to wage a series of wars to gain himself more power in Europe.
What was the first national government? It is believed to have been that of the first Egyptian king. Menes, who united Upper and Lower Egypt in 3110 B. C. and founded a central government at Memphis, near present-day Cairo. Ruling for 62 years, Menes established the first of what would eventually number. 30 dynasties that ruled ancient Egypt for nearly 3,000 years until 332 BC. By the time. The third dynasty began around 2700 BC, the central government was well established. And strong subjects believed their kings and queens to be half human and half god. The pharaohs lived in magnificent luxury. Palaces and temples were built for them and were filled with exotic goods from other lands. These treasures were even buried with the pharaohs in order to be enjoyed in the afterworld. It was during the Third Dynasty that the 500-year period known as the Old Kingdom or the Pyramid Age began. It would become the period that saw the building of gigantic pyramids for Egypt's kings. What is a prophet? Most broadly, a prophet is any person who tells what will happen. But in a religious context. Prophets are people who preach what they believe has been divinely revealed to them. In this way, they are seen as instruments of God and are thought to possess profound spiritual and moral insight. Moses was a Hebrew prophet, as were Isaiah and Jeremiah. Among others, Muhammad was an Islamic prophet, and Christians regard Jesus as a prophet. The Bible, Old Testament, also warns of false prophets. In other words, prophets who do not speak the truth. For example, Deuteronomy 13:1-3 says, Should a prophet or a peddler of dreams appear among you and offer you a sign or portent, and call on you to go after other gods whom you have not known and to worship them, of not heed the words of that prophet or dreamer. What are reparations? Reparations are payments or other compensations made to a group of people who have been wronged or injured. The issue was in the news in the 1990s and early 2000s as lawmakers, academics and other leaders pressed for a redress for slavery. Which some scholars call the American, or Black. Holocaust. The precedents for making reparations were several, the German government made reparations to survivors and families of victims of the Nazi Holocaust. And the American government made reparations to Japanese Americans who had been interned during World War II. 1939-45, as well as to Native Americans, for damages done to them. The recent discussion of reparations began in 1989, when U.S. Representative John Conyers, Michigan, introduced a bill, H.R. 40, in Congress to establish a commission to examine the institution of slavery, 
and economic discrimination against African Americans and if so determined, to make recommendations to the Congress on appropriate remedies. As the idea of reparations gained currency in the American public in the 1990s, supporters argued that redress for slavery would help heal the open wound of race relations and would compensate the descendants of slaves whose ancestors' work had helped build the national economy. They further argued that slavery resulted in long-term discrimination that beleaguered black Americans. They were the victims of a centuries-old government-sanctioned system that established a legacy of race-based injustices. African-American activist and author Randall Robinson explained it this way. No nation can enslave a group of people for hundreds of years, set them free bedraggled and penniless to pit them. Without assistance, in a hostile environment against privileged victimizers, and then reasonably expect the gap between the ears of the two groups to narrow. Lines begun parallel and left alone can never touch. In bolstering support for reparations, Robinson pointed to the consequences of this massive injustice that blacks in the United States experience high rates of infant mortality, low incomes, high rates of unemployment, substandard education, high death rates, below average lifespans, and overrepresentation in prisons and on death row. Critics of reparations said that compensating the descendants of slaves was unrealistic. Determining who would be paid would alone constitute an expensive government program. They also questioned why descendants of slaves should be paid by the government a century and a half after the end of the brutal system. Further, they argued that other programs, born of the civil rights movement, have strived to bring equity to African Americans. Despite criticism, Representative Conyers resolved to reintroduce his bill as often as necessary until Congress would act on it. He emphasized that his goal was to create a commission, informed by town hall meetings, to first determine if there should be reparations and if so, who should be paid and how much. H.R. Forty had received the support of the city councils of Detroit, Cleveland, Chicago, and Atlanta.